Hi everybody, so this is the final video of the Romeo and Juliet commentary series. I'm going to take you through the end of the ballet and the death scene. What's just happened is Juliet has agreed to marry Paris and the whole family is rejoicing, but unbeknownst to everyone, Juliet has taken the, the um, not the poison, but the the um, solution that Fire Lawrence gave her to make her appear to be dead. But these are her friends who have come in and uh, brought in the white lilies because she's getting married. And they've literally just put a ton of flowers all over me. <laughs> and you're laying there and you can't move. Um, and everyone thinks she's still asleep at this point. So in comes the nurse. I believe that's Dina Abergel. And the nurse comes in and thinks, oh, she's still sleeping. And look at the pretty flowers. And we're going to have a wedding. And it's going to be great. Um, you know, the nurse having a bit of fun because <laughs> nobody's around. Come on, Juliet, wake up, darling. And she's strategically getting the flowers off of me. There, that's, that's on purpose. Come on, Juliet, wake up. And of course, she's not moving, um, which is hard. It's harder than you think when people are shaking you and people are, you know, and you're trying to play dead. It's harder than it looks because you can't blink, you can't move, you can't. You know, it's, it's tricky. So, obviously she realizes something is not right. Um, you're not moving. And, like, when she takes your hand and drops it, you can't drop it yourself. You have to just let it fall. It's, it's tricky. Whoops. Screams. Initially, when the nurse screamed there, she was actually going to scream. But it just kind of ruined the moment. So they do a silent scream instead. instead. But I remember when Peter first choreographed it, it was an actual out loud scream right there. So here comes Darcy Kistler as Lady Capulet, and she's like, what is your problem? And the nurse says, oh, something is wrong. Juliet's dead, or appears to be dead. She's not really dead. They don't know that. Oh, go look at your daughter. Um, so here comes Lady Capulet. And Darcy's so, I loved having Darcy as my mother because she would, she would shake me and like, go, oh, oh, Katie, you're dead. And it was so hard for me not to smile because it was just so sweet because she was so into it. And um, It's hard. It's harder than it looks, you guys. It's, it's more than just laying there. So she, she sees the bottle and thinks Juliet has poisoned herself. That's why in that last video when I said you hopefully get strategically drop that bottle it's because Lady Capulet has to find it so here comes Lord Capulet and he says what's your problem and he hasn't figured it out yet either and the nurse I think actually is the one that's the most upset because remember from earlier videos wealthy families in those days the children were cared for by the nurse the nurse became the mother figure the parents were there and but the parents were the head of the house and it was a kind of a the children were very removed from the parents so to me, in doing this, the nurse is the one that's probably the most devastated that she's dead. Okay, this is hard. Again, not helping. When you're lifted as a dead person, it's so hard not to help. And this is tricky too, because we all four had to climb on the stairs because now the set is changing and it's gonna become the tomb. So literally all four of us are up there on that little, <laughs> on the bed and trying to not get closed in by the doors. So now Romeo has heard that Juliet is dead. Something's gone wrong and he has not received the message from Friar Lawrence that she is faking her death. Um, some, something got lost in translation, so of course he is distraught because he's heard the news from the family that Juliet has killed herself. Um, again, Romeo is Sean Swazi, and he just is completely distraught. So here, here's the set changes, and that's a very quick change back there it completely becomes the tomb, um, which when you see it live too, it's this whole series right here is very creepy. Just her, you know, coming out on that tomb. And um, here comes the death pot of which is so hard for the boy because you literally can't help. He has to partner dead weight. Um, and in my debut show with Seth Orza, Seth fell backwards down the stairs with me. Um, I'll show you where but I couldn't help because you're dead. <laughs> you literally can't help. Um, see here, he literally has to dead weight. The one thing I did do, right here, right here is where Seth fell with me down the stairs. Um, I did point my feet. I just think it doesn't look good when you're being partnered and even as a dead person, you're not pointing your feet. I just, it just kind of ruins the line. So I tried to keep my toes pointed. And you have to find little ways to help 
because otherwise it becomes impossible for him. See, he has to dead press you. Ugh, so hard. And it's at the end of the ballet too. You've already done two acts and they're, you're exhausted, they're exhausted, and he has to partner dead weight. And look, walk up the stairs with you over his shoulder. That is so tricky. Um, so props to you, Sean and Seth and all the Romeos. That's really hard to do. Here comes Mr. Purple Tights, Paris, um, Adrian Ditch Guaring. And this, they have a one more sword fight because obviously Paris is the one that was set to marry Juliet. But Romeo was really married to her and it was a big problem. So let's fight it out. So they do one more sword fight. And the really hard thing is that Adrian had to do this in a cape. That just adds a whole element, extra element, that makes it really tricky. Romeo wins, stabs him. And this is hard because the Parises were all told, make sure you fall in a, my, a somewhat comfortable position because you have to stay there for the rest of the ballet until the curtain comes down. Adrian literally has to stay there for the next however long. <laughs> so make sure you die comfortably. Um, so here is where Romeo cannot take it anymore, and he has brought his own vial of poison and is going to kill himself because, you know, he, again, they're rash teenagers. Nobody, what's amazing to me about the story is that nobody thought it through. Like, let's stop and think for a minute. Like, let's not, <laughs> you know, why can't we just hold on, don't do anything rash, but, you know, they're teenagers, so... They get married after meeting 24 hours ago and <laughs> they both end up dying. I mean, it's just, that's the thing about, the, the one thing about these characters that always bothered me is that nobody thought anything through. Um, I know that's the story, but anyway. Okay, so just as he dies, perfect timing, of course, she wakes up out of her fake death state. And this is hard because you can't see him yet. So you have to wake up and go, where am I? What has happened? And you have to see Paris without seeing Romeo because there's you see Romeo on the new phrase in a second. So she sees, okay, I've woken up in a tomb. Paris is dead. Something is not right. And then you see his cape. And there are different ter interpretations of this. Some people played it as they thought Romeo was came to the tomb and fell asleep and then oh he's here and then realized he was dead I just went straight to the death because um, there was not a lot of time so I just went straight to complete despair but it just depended on the dancer and you have to look completely frantic and distraught and have it be big and read to the back of the audience without looking fake that's what's so hard about this here comes the silent scream from the depths of your soul. That's essentially what I tried to do there. Um, and this is hard, pulling him down the stairs, which is not an easy feat. In my debut show with Seth Orza, Seth landed on his head. <laughs> was not, it was not good. Um, she tries to drink the poison to see if there's any left. That don't, obviously doesn't work. And then she gets the idea because she sees the dagger to then kill herself, which this is tricky too because you have to, again, make, make it look like the knife goes in, but it really doesn't. Um, at one point, we had a retractable knife where it folded in on itself, but it just sounded and looked too creepy. <laughs> just, it just, it, they were like, no, that's not good. Just because it made this weird kind of sound that, a little too graphic. Um, and then she crawls back to him. One final kiss and dies and actually the very tricky thing about this is that you're resting on his stomach and he's breathing hard so I would have to hold my head up slightly by myself so that I wouldn't my head wouldn't rise and fall with his breathing because obviously we're supposed to be dead so I literally am holding my head up there trying to make it look like I'm not resting on his diaphragm and he's breathing <laughs> so it's hard because you have to make it look like you're dead it com would completely ruin the moment if we're both like heavily breathing there. So I'm actually holding my head up a little bit. And the parents then of course come in and realize what's happened. All of the characters come back in and realize what's happened. And of course, Friar Lawrence realizes that he messed up. He, something got lost somewhere and things didn't work out the way that he had planned. And um, again, different versions 
like in Macmillan's version, it's just Romeo and Juliet by themselves on the stage at the end. But in this version, they kind of want Peter wanted to tie everything back together and bring all the characters back on. Um, and hopefully, you see that the Montagues and Capulets will actually reconcile. Um, that was the point of that. Is that moving forward due to the deaths of Romeo and Juliet, the Montagues and Capulets finally resolved their conflict. So this is kind of a um, just a photo call is what this is called and the curtain comes up, we just stand there. And at this point you are, I know I've joked through this entire series, just to kind of lighten it, and you know, you guys know I like to joke on these commentaries and have fun with it, but you are absolutely spent. Um, when you do a role that is so incredibly emotional and so incredibly, you know, you have so much drama to it, you have to put everything out there, you have to convince yourself that you are that character and really feel the emotions. Holding back doesn't work. So by the time you, you're done, you're completely spent, um, and you you have nothing left to give. And if you've given a great performance, that's how you should feel. And it's a very satisfying feeling to know that you've put everything out there on the stage and hopefully have taken the audience on a, an incredible journey with the story. Because it is a very beautiful story. The score is amazing in this ballet. Um, it's my favorite ballet score. I think it's just perfect. And what I love about the score is that you could literally sit there and read the play along with it. And it, it helps you see the play. The play comes to life. Prokofiev did such an amazing job with this music. Um, and I think that's why it, this works so well. Um, so here's, yeah, final bow. I just wanted to show you. Oh, Albert Evans. We miss him a lot. Albert Evans was the Prince of Verona. Austin Laurent as Mercutio. I'm sorry, Benvolio. Adrian Danzig wearing as Paris. Andy Vayette as Mercutio. Amar Ramsar as Tybalt. I'm still not a fan of the yellow for Tybalt. I think that could be fixed. Um, Darcy and Jock, Lord and Lady Capulet. It was such an amazing thing for me. And then, of course, myself and Sean to have Darcy and Jock play my parents because they're such legends and I grew up watching videos of them and they were you know idols of mine and then to have them play my parents was just an amazing thing. There's Faisal, our conductor. Love him. Um, I don't think he's there anymore. He I think moved back to France but he was an amazing conductor and every time he conducted the, the musicians sounded incredible. That's always fun to go get the conductor too. Um, and interestingly enough, if it's a um, male conductor, the ballerina will go get him, but sometimes we had a female conductor, and then the principal male dancer would go get the female conductor. Um, and if you guys ever wondered how this works with this curtain coming back, that's just stagehands. Two stagehands holding the curtain. That's how that works. It's not some crazy weird device. It's just two men holding the curtain. And all of us trying to fit out there <laughs> is rather interesting. Um, hey, it's not over yet. Sit down. Sit down, y'all. You've got to finish bowing. Um, but yeah, as this was such an amazing experience. I loved every second of it. This will forever be one of my favorite roles. Um, and Sean and I get our own bow. I think we get... Sometimes we got two or three curtain calls. I can't remember with this one. It just depended on how we were on time. If we were over time, they didn't give us a second curtain call. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. I will definitely do more commentary on different ballets. If you missed my video on the Intermediate and Advanced Ballet Class Center, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I will see you next time.